Welcome to NSA e Nugget series, a series of live talks on topics related to active aging. These live talks will take place every Tuesday at 2 p.m. here on C3A's Facebook page. You can share this live video with your family and friends too. After the live session, this video will be made available on both our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the C3A's NSA eNugget series. My name is Jennifer, and today I would like to share with you on the topic of how to use your SkillsFuture credit wisely. This is brought to you by SkillsFuture Singapore and Southwest CDC. So a bit about myself before I begin. My name is Jennifer again, and I'm from Southwest CDC. I'm a SkillsFuture advisor and usually I go about conducting workshops and webinar sessions to share about skills future programs and initiatives. Before we start the session proper, let's do a poll. So there will be some poll questions, a poll question on the screen. So you can just select the option to answer the question, have you utilized your skills future credit already? So you just click on yes or no, and then we will get the answer from most of you. So SkillsFuture credit was in fact launched in 2016. And in 2016, everyone was given $500 if you're Singaporean and 25 years and above. So from 2016 till now, this year there has been a top up to our SkillsFuture credit of another $500. But I think some of you may not be uh, aware of how to use this top up. So this is where we will be coming in today to share a few more details about the top up and how you can utilize that additional amount of budget. So we'll wait for everyone to come in and do the poll for us before we look at the results. And later we'll be sharing more details with you about skills future programs and initiatives as well, as well as to debunk some myths that has been going around. So thank you very much. Majority of you have replied and said that yes, you have been using your skills future credit, which is very good. Okay, now let's proceed. So let's look at the workshop outline. We will be talking about the changing world work and how it has affected our lives. What is SkillsFuture and what is SkillsFuture credit? How do we do a navigation of the portal and how to claim your credits? And we'll share about other useful resources as well. So later during the session, if you have any questions during the session later, please leave it to the end of the session. There'll be a Q&A session where you can ask the questions. And if you find any information in the slides useful, Please feel free to take a screenshot or watch the video again. It will be available in C3A's Facebook page. So now let's talk about the changing world and how it has affected our lives. Let's do this by watching a video. Keep on smiling. Cause the sun is shining The world's a better place with a smile upon your face So keep on smiling Keep on laughing The best yet to happen Your eyes are shining bright Your heart is full of light So keep on laughing And if it's cloudy Sometimes ooh, ooh, ooh. Keep on smiling Cause the sun is shining The world's a better place With a smile upon your face So keep on smiling We chase the clouds away And brighten up your day So keep on smiling Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. Some of you may have seen this before on TV or even on C3A's Facebook. So what this video 
shows is that the way that our lives have been working around has changed a lot. So for example, pre-COVID, we used to go out and visit our friends and relatives. But due to the COVID situation, especially before phase two, we had to deal, deal with or use digital technology to keep in touch with our friends and families, be it celebrating birthdays, looking at our grandchildren, or even we learn how to sell things online using Facebook Live. So the way that we have been working or the way we have been living has changed a lot. And this is what we call the new normal. Things may not return to normal so soon, or in fact, there'll be new ways of doing things. So it's good that all of us learn some digital technology so we can keep up with the times and use it for, example, e-payments or keeping in touch with our friends and families. So now let us look at a few other examples in terms of payment. So payment-wise, previously, we used a lot of cash. And after that, we slowly move on to Nets and credit card. I remember when my parents first had their, had their first Nets card, right? They were very afraid that the machine would eat up their money or the bank would have some records wrongly and they couldn't get back their money. Okay, so after a while, then they realized that things are to be trusted. Then uh, slowly we went into credit cards and then now we have pay now, pay la, easier ways of paying back each other or paying merchants as well. And if you see this machine, this is the at the supermarkets or even the churches and 7-Eleven so that the cashier does not need to handle your cash. They can concentrate on other things. What about shopping? So shop the way we shop has changed a lot. Nowadays, when you go to a shopping center, you have to scan the safe entry and then you have to have quota, not to have too much crowding in the area. So having online shopping helps us in a way that if we learn how to do online shopping, things get delivered to our doorstep. We don't have to go out. And then nowadays, there are a lot of things that can be done online. Even the Chinese herbal shop has gone online. And recently, I saw the Facebook page called Hawkers United, where the hawkers get to take orders using WhatsApp and technology, and then they can get people to deliver their food to the others as well. So now, then, what do we talk about is what is skills future? And what about skills future credit? Most of the time when we talk to the community, the uncles and aunties, and we ask them, what is skills future? Most of the replies will be $500. Okay. To them, skills future is skills future credit, which is the $500. But actually, there are 19 programs and initiatives under skills future. So let us start off with a quiz. So we have some quiz questions. So you can see whether how many of them you will get correct. Okay. So first question, my skills future credit from 2016 will never expire. Is that true or is that false? Okay. So you can think about your answer. And the answer is true. So those $500 that you got from 2016, the credits will not expire. Okay. There is an annual top up. Second question, uh, there is an annual top up of skills future credit. True or false? So the answer is false. So in the letter, the first letter that the government sent to us, it says that there is periodic top up. They didn't mention there is a yearly top up. So from 2016, we got our first $500 and 2020, this year, we are getting another $500. Okay, this question. From my skills future credit account, I can, number one, earn interest. Two, withdraw cash. Three, transfer my credit to others. Four, transfer my credits to my CPF. Is that true or false? Okay. And the answer is false. Okay. So you cannot earn interest from your account. I remember the very first time people came to our career center, you know, career center, and said that they want to withdraw the skills future credit. You cannot do that. Nor can you transfer your credits to your grandson, to your children, because you feel that they can learn. Because no matter what age we are, we can continue to learn. Okay? So there's no transfer to your CPF as well. Question, learning is only for young people. True or false? Of course, false. Okay? So learning is for everyone, no matter what age you are, no matter where you are at. And the only way to learn is to take courses or attend classes. Is it true or is it false? False again. So we know that we learn a lot sometimes from each other. So you can be speaking to your neighbor, to your friend, and they tell you, hey, there's this app very useful that you can find out buses and then what, what time the bus comes. And then I say, oh, is it? Then they teach you. And then after that, you learn something. So you don't really have to go to a class to learn. 
So then why is there a need for SkillsFuture? With the changes that I was mentioning to you earlier, especially now with COVID, it has brought forward the need to advance our skills in digital technology as well. So with all the changing world, of, world out there, it is important for us to have new skills for the future. And SkillsFuture is a movement. So it's a movement to learn from the current ways of working or living. It can be through manual ways, pen and paper, moving things physically, doing a lot of manual work and working in silos, moving into using technology to help us in our work, tapping on automation and working in teams. So it is a movement to help us move our ways of working and improve and upgrade our skills. So now we will look into what is SkillsFuture credit. So I think most of you have already used your credit, so you will know that SkillsFuture credit was given to us initially to develop our ownership of our learning. So previously when we were working, sometimes we depend on employers to send us for causes, but if the employer says it's not relevant or it's fine, it's not relevant, they may ask you to take up your own money to pay for it or you decide not to go. So this $500 is given to us so that we can use this amount to take up courses that we want to take up. Who is it for? As long as a Singaporean, 25 years and above, you will have this amount. Where can you find it? All courses under my SkillsFuture course directory can be used to pay for using your SkillsFuture credit. How do you apply? So the step is first, search for the course you're interested in. Second, register with the training provider. It can be externally through their premises, emailing them, calling them. After which you go back into the system and submit your application for the claim to be paid to the training provider before the course happens. So all this is for physical classrooms or e-learning e types of courses. But if you are taking Udemy, Coursera, Udacity, which we call massive online open courses. These providers are in the overseas, uh, or in USA example. If you find these courses, you want to take them up, what you do is search for the course, make sure it's approved, apply for the course on the provider's website, pay for it first using your credit facilities, go back into the system and claim to reimburse yourself. This is the only time you can pay first, claim later. For the rest of the courses, as long as there's a Singapore presence here, you need to pay directly to the training provider. And what is this credits about? So all of us know we have this opening of $500. This year, we have a top up of $500. And for people who are age 40 to 60 years old, Singaporeans, they have an additional credit. Let me go into that into more details in the next slide. Hey, so now we focus on the group of Singaporeans age 25 and above. We exclude the group age 40 to 60 first. Please be patient. I will share with you in the next slide. This group includes those who are six, 61 and above. Okay, this group includes those who are 61 and above all the way to 100 plus, okay? So first, since 2016, all of us have been given this $500 credit. There is no expiry date. As of 1st October 2020, there is a top up announced at a budget of $500 given to everyone, which expires in five years' time. So it will expire in, on 31st December 2025. All these credits can be used to support our upskilling and reskilling efforts as long as we can find the causes in the directory. But this is with effect for the top up, is with effect from 1st October 2020. So later, I have some good news for y'all. So hold on, eh? I'll share the next slide first. Now, we like to focus on all Singaporeans who are age 40 to 60 in the year 2020. So similarly, you will have the first SFC since 2016 of 500. And you will also be eligible for the top up $500 expiring in five years time. In addition to this, Singaporeans age 40 to 60 have this mid-career support skills future credit, which is effective from 1st October 2020, an additional $500, which will expire in five years' time. What is this used for? This is used for you to support your career transitioning efforts. 
what do I mean by that? So let me give you an example. So if you have been working in general roles and you want to go into something more specialized, example, healthcare, you're interested in healthcare and you decide that I want to go into healthcare, but I don't have any knowledge or skills on healthcare. Once the causes have been announced nearer the date of 1st October 2020, you can use this additional $500 to go for causes <coughs> which have been approved and related to healthcare. And then through this upgrading, it will help you go towards the job that you are looking for. So this amount, the mid-career support, especially for people between the age of 40 to 60 who are looking at career transition. That means they want to change their jobs. So for example, I have an aunt who's at 50 years old, but then she's not interested in changing her job. She, is, she likes the job she is in. Most likely, she will not utilize this amount. This is only for people who want to change their jobs. And the good news, just now I was sharing with you all, the good news is that with effect from 1st April 2020, this top-up amount has been brought forward. So initially, you will only come into effect on 1st October, but because of the COVID situation, the government has brought forward this top-up amount to be claimable from 1st April 2020. But the number of causes or the types of institutes that can claim this amount is limited to the 12 Institute of Higher Learnings and NTUC Learning Hub. However, all these institutes add together already have about 8,000 over causes that you can choose from. So who are the Institute of Higher Learnings that you can approach or you can check for? So this is the list of the different Institute of Higher Learning. So they are the three ITEs, the Polytechnics, and of course the universities, and on top of that, NTUC Learning Hub. So the advanced use of the top up, remember, is only for courses conducted by these institutes and NTUC Learning Hub. So how do we maximize the 500 or one, even $1,000 that we have? So I'm going to share with you through this course fee funding example. So let's say you decide to go for a course on how to use a tablet. Original course fees, $320. Okay. So behind the scenes, the government actually comes in with subsidies for courses they find are useful for us to learn. So for this particular course, there's a 70% subsidy. And if we are Singaporean 40 years and above, there is this mid-career and hard subsidy that some courses are eligible for, which increases your funding up to 90%. Out of which, you pay 10% remaining balance and you can use your skills with your credit to pay for it and you don't have to come up with any cash. Okay, the only time you may need to come with cash is sometimes the training provider charges you an admin fee or registration fee. Otherwise, you can tap on funding to offset some of the course fees that you need to pay for. So when you're comparing courses, apart from meeting what you need to learn, always check with the training provider are uh, there subsidies you can enjoy. And usually the subsidies are from the Institute of Higher Learnings, which I mentioned earlier. Okay, so now we are going into the navigating my skills future portal part and how to claim your credit. So I will be sharing with you how to search for causes and the process of claiming your credits. So firstly, you can go to my skills future website, myskillsfuture.sg, go into causes and then browse all causes. After which you come across this Google search bar. You search browse by categories and advanced use of SFC top up. This is where you search for the training providers for the top up. Example, I click on Singapore Polytechnic and you can see all the courses that Singapore Polytechnic has under this portal. So all these courses can be using your credits or you can just search on the other tabs like for National Silver Academy, the number of courses, or even SkillsFuture at PA. And all the courses under the different training providers will come out. You can do a filter. If you want to limit or lower the kind of courses that you can look through, do a filter on training duration or even the cost fees that you would like to pay. Of course, the more you filter, the lesser the causes may appear. Another way you can search for causes is do an open and close inverted comma and then type in Android phone. So if you're interested in searching for Android phone causes, then you can click into any of the courses or training provider that provides this course. 
And you can see the course key information on the right-hand side, like the training duration. Is it a part-time, full-time, the language use? Read more from the training provider's website. And importantly, the course contact person you can email or send an inquiry to. And on the left-hand side, you will see the course fees and the button to claim your credits after you have registered with the training provider. If you click on the claim, you will need to log in and then they'll ask you to log in using your SingPass. So if you click on it, you will be directed to the SingPass web page where you will just key in your login ID and your password. And you will see something like this, where you will be shown your available credit. You need to key in the course details from what you sign up for. Example, the course date, the amount you paid. And as you can see here, you just pay by training provider. And after that, if you scroll down, you will be able to see loading or supporting documents. You can just use your phone to take picture of your invoice receipt, upload it, take the terms and conditions of declaration and just click the submit button. The only thing you need to take note of is if your course is canceled before the course happens due to whatever reason, make sure to come back in here and cancel your claim so that the money gets returned to you. If not, you can wait for the training provider to process it back end for you, but it may take some time. Of course, I'm not encouraging everyone to cancel their claims or causes due to whatever reason, because you may have signed some terms and conditions with the training provider. So always discuss with them first. Okay? So now, just now what I was sharing is if you are using your previous 2016 credits, which are already in the system, but for the top up, the system will only be activated as of 1st October 2020. So for the time being, if you want to use your top up, you need to process it in a manual way. So what you do is you approach the different Institute of Higher Learnings or NQC Learning Hub to verify your details and tell them, I want to use my top up for the courses I found in the directory. Then they will provide you with a form and then you commit, complete it and submit it to the training provider. And then SkillsFuture Singapore will notify you whether your application is successful or not, after which the training provider will enroll you in the course. For any questions, you can go to the training provider. Don't worry about memorizing all this. Just go to them and say, I want to use my top-up amount for the course I found in the system. And remember, 12 Institute of Higher Learnings and NTUC Learning Hub. So some of you may be wondering, okay, I'm interested in taking up courses, but I don't know what courses I want to take. So firstly, you may want to consider what are some skills or things that I want to learn or I'm interested to learn. So digital technology is something which is very popular nowadays. So do you want to learn how to use your phone better or tablet better? How to use a basic computer? How to make cashless payments, set up everything on your account or your phone? How about languages? So if you feel that you want to improve your English, your Mandarin, or even want to learn Korean or Japanese, you can learn languages there as well. And of course, if you are very uh, taking care of your health, you may want to look at your TCM herbal diet or TCM ways of taking care of yourself. If you are the creative type, you like to use your hands to create things, then you may want to look at flower arrangement, photography. And I know a lot of friends and relatives recently due to COVID have been learning how to cook and bake. So they have all become very expert bakers. So if you want to go for courses to do that, you can take it up as well. So under the National Silver Academy, there are a lot of programs that you can consider. And there is a hotline there which you can take or call them to find out more about the courses. Alternatively, you can go to their website and they have a various different types of courses. Example, if you're focusing on your health and wellness or life skills, or even finance and business if you're interested in setting up small businesses, etc. So you can go to the nsa.org.sg website if you're interested in all these NSA courses. Or you can call the help hotline too. What are some other useful resources that you can tap on? So we have this program under SkillsFuture called SkillsFuture for Digital Workplace. It is a two-day foundational training program. And let me share a bit about what it covers. So basically it covers what are your jobs in the future economy, how data is being used nowadays, learn some functional outcomes of using common digital tools. So for example, I went for this program, right? I learned how to code a simple robot. Okay? And of course, 
telling you the importance of cybersecurity, what are certain things you need to be aware of, especially when you're tapping on free Wi-Fi, and how to develop an action plan for your continuous learning. So this two days workshop is highly subsidized, $50 for two days for the public. If you are an NTUC union member, you pay $10 net. So these are some of the training providers who are actually having this program. They have been uh, given by the government, government to actually conduct this program. So for if you're interested in community, you can look for these training providers. The Institute of Higher Learning, the Polytechnics are conducting it too as well. So don't worry about which one it is. Just go to the directory and search for SkillsFuture for Digital Workplace. So if you want to stay at home, and learn the comfort of your own home, ULIP is an app that you may want to consider downloading. It is a free app available both on the App Store and Play Store. And ULIP allows you to have bite-sized learning on the go. So example, you're interested in a particular topic, but you don't want to spend money to go and take up the course first because you're not sure. You can go to ULIP and then read through the different articles, watch the videos, and then even attempt the quizzes and see whether this is something you're really interested in before you sign up for courses. So next, I'm going to share with you what are some other Skills Future programs and initiatives. I'm going to share two of them which are more relevant to you. But if you want to find out what are the programs and initiatives under Skills Future that are relevant to you, you can go to this portal called skillsfuture.sg. So just now when we are searching for courses, that portal is called My Skills Future. There's a my in front right? because it's relevant to me. So under My Skills Future, I look for courses that I want to apply for, do self-assessments that I'm interested in, and things that is relevant to me. But for Skills Future, it lists down all the 19 programs and initiatives that you can search for. So one of these is called Skills Future Qualification Award. So if you have been taking some WSQ courses, Workforce Skills Qualification, diploma or certificates, you are eligible for a cash award of $1,000 for diplomas or $200 for certificates. So how do you get a certificate? Sometimes you may be taking different modules or courses of WSQ, after which you add them together, it becomes a certificate. The best person to know whether you have a certificate or not is the training provider or what are some missing courses that you may need to take to get a certificate. So check with your training provider if you're unsure if not, if you already have a certificate or a diploma, you can go into the skillsfuture.sg webpage I was showing you earlier and look under e-services and see whether or not you are eligible for a cash award. This is the example I was sharing with you earlier called the Skills Future Mid Career Enhanced Subsidy. So if you're Singaporean age 40 years and above, you can receive at least 90% funding for program cost fees funded by MOE or Skills Future Singapore. So the best person will know is still the training provider, or you can go into our website. Some of them have listed down the different kinds of subsidies that people of different ages or profiles can enjoy. So just check with them whether you're entitled to subsidies. Next, I would like to share with you about Adapt and Grow. So if you have friends or relatives or even yourself who is thinking about looking for a job, you can look at this program called Adapt and Grow because it is a national effort to help with career matchmaking and moving people into jobs for a better future. So in Adapt and Grow, you can talk to a professional career coach, attend interview or resume writing workshops, or even attend job fairs that help you match yourself to an employer. And all this is fully subsidized by the government. You do not have to pay if you are Singaporean or PR. And all these services are for locals. So how do you apply to talk to a career coach? You can either scan the QR code or just search for E2I or Workforce Singapore. And we have five career centers that you can go to to make an appointment and talk to a career coach on your job search needs. Next, I would like to share with you about SG United Jobs and Skills Package. This is a very recently launched program due to the COVID situation. So there are three programs under this. One is talking about jobs. So there are 40,000 jobs that the government is trying to create together with the private sector. So the public sector has moved forward their recruitment needs and they're also working with the private sector to 
to come up with positions to hire our local workers. Okay. Secondly, we are looking at traineeship. So traineeship, there are two components to it. One is called the traineeship, United Traineeship, where you can first-time local job seekers can apply for traineeship opportunities with companies and then they will learn on the job and they will get some allowances. The second one is for mid-career job seekers. So mid-career job seekers also have traineeship opportunities, but this one will be launched at a different date at a later time. So just look out for it in the news for the mid-career traineeship. Currently, the traineeship for first-time job seekers has been launched. And thirdly, is about skills training. So the SG United Skills Package is six to 12 months, uh, six or 12 month training programs with different institutes where people can sign up for six or 12 months programs to learn new skills. And the payment for this skills training is either $500 for the six month program or $1,000 for the 12 month program, after which both can be deducted using your skills future credit. And during this six or 12 month program, you will also be entitled to some training allowance. Basically, this program is to help people upskill themselves in what are some emerging skills in different sectors. So this skills, SG United Skills program has just been launched. If you're interested in any of them, you can just search for it in the website or Google. Okay. Alternatively, we have a free webinar, complimentary webinar on building resilience through skills future on every week of the month. So if you are interested in finding out more how you can develop your resilience and upskill yourself, you can sign up for our public webinars, which is fully complimentary. Okay, so now we are at the Q&A. So if there are any questions that you would like to ask, please feel free to ask us. Okay, hold on. Eh? Alice, so Alice has a question. Does the top up apply to those above 60? Yes, Alice. So remember the very first picture I was showing. It is for people who are from 25 and above, Singaporean 25 above, all the way to, uh, there's no limit, basically, if you're 100, 100 plus, as long as you're Singaporean age 25 and above, you will get the top up of $500. Okay, second question. Can the $500 credit and $500 top up be combined to pay for one course or must they be applied to different courses? Okay, for the time being, yes, it can be combined, but you must take note that the combination must be for a course from the 12th Institute of Higher Learning or NTUC Learning Hub. Because remember the top up, is restricted to these institutes first, up until 1st October. If of 1st October you decide to go for this course, it can be from any institute in the directory, you can combine these amounts. And usually how they prioritize the payment is they will try to use your top-up amount because it has an expiry date first before they use your 2016 skills future credit. I hope that answers your question, Alice. So yes, it can be combined, but if you want to take it before 1st October, make sure the course training provider is from the 12th Institute of Higher Learnings or NTUC Learning Hub. Okay, traineeship just for young people. So just like I mentioned, there are two types of traineeship. One is for first-time local job seekers. So for example, it can be a graduate from ITE, Polytechnic or University. And there is another one which is called mid-career traineeship. This mid-career traineeship is for people who have been working already. So, But the mid-career traineeship is still in progress. They are looking, they are trying to combine the employers and coming out with a program. So do have some patience while they come out with it. Thank you. Okay, another question. When claiming or paying using my skills future credits, will it automatically use the top up amount? Yes. So just now I tried to answer that question through Alice, right? So example, before 1st October 2020, if you are using that top up amount, you would automatically take from that top up if you are using the 12th Institute of Higher Learnings or NTUC Learning Hub. Once 1st October happens, that thing is in the system, the top-up is in the system, they will automatically take it from the top-up amount first. So they won't touch your 2016 credits if you have not used it. Once it is in the system, they will use your top-up amount first because it has an expiry date. Which course are WSQ? How do we know before we sign up? 
Okay, usually, if you search by the course, you search for WSQ, Workforce Skills Qualification, in the directory, the list of courses will also come out. Or you can just check with the training provider, what are some WSQ courses that you have? Okay, so WSQ courses are mainly skills-based courses. Diplomas can be from 9 to 18 months, so a lengthier period. Well, certificates, sometimes different modules may take two to three days. So I would advise that first, you need to know what you want to learn before you decide what kind of courses you want to take. Okay, so what you want to learn, key in the skills or the keyword search first, and then you see whether WSQ programs have something that you are interested in. Thank you. So are there any more questions? How will I know if the pace of the program will fit me? I think it's very important to try to talk to the training provider before you commit to a course, especially if it's a long-term course. Okay, so depending on what you want to learn, you check with the training provider, how frequent is the course, whether there are any projects that you need to do, any homework, any tests, any exams, because sometimes some people will be stressed by exams or tests or projects. So check with the training provider what is covered in the course you are taking before you decide to commit to it. So go back and think through before you decide. Okay, there's another question is, can we use SkillsFuture for CC hobby causes? So Priscilla, for CC causes, right, if you search under SkillsFuture at PA, as long as the course is listed in the directory, then you can use your SkillsFuture credit. Hobbies depends on what kind of hobby. So SkillsFuture credit is used for skills-based kind of learning. For example, if your hobby is photography, I think there are some photography causes inside. If it's cooking, Cooking more related to probably certain kind of uh, cuisine, yes, it is listed inside. So search for the keywords first and see whether the hobbies they're interested in is inside. Are there any other questions that we have? So PA causes usually are shorter term causes. It can be for a few hours. So most of the time, it may not be WSQ certified. WSQ certified causes are usually those by the Institute of Higher Learning or NTUC Learning Hub. You can check just by searching WSQ and they will usually tell you what kind of training providers conduct these causes. So PA causes usually are not WSQ certified. Do you have any other questions? We'll wait a while more. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I hope you found the session useful. So if you miss out any of the things that I was sharing, feel free to go back into C3A's Facebook and re-watch the video. Okay, okay, there's another question. How do you get a course you are interested in but not listed for SkillsFuture to be added to the list? Okay, so this one, you need to approach the training provider. So for example, training provider A has a particular course that you are interested in, but it's not listed. So usually SkillsFuture Singapore needs the training provider to submit an application to them to get the course approved in the system. So the training provider itself must be agreeable that they want to place this course inside the directory to be applicable for skills future credit. So the best person to approach is ask the training provider, can you apply to have this course approved by skills future Singapore so that I can apply using my credits? So this is up to the training provider whether they agree or not to do that. For seniors above 65, what causes can we sign up for? So Barbara, there's, there's no limit to the 
age in terms of what kind of courses that you can sign up for. So if you are interested, you can go to the NSA kind of uh, courses because NSA courses, some of them do not have tests or exams. Because tests and exams, most of the time, even my parents uh, keep telling me that I don't test, I don't exam, I don't go for a course that stresses me out. So if you are looking for courses that don't stress you so much, you can look at NSA kind of courses or even the skills future at PA kind of courses. But there's no limit to what kind of courses we can take up. You can take up a data analytics course if you're interested in it. Okay? So there is all the courses inside are not limited by age. Okay, another question. I have attended WSQ certified courses. Where to locate my certificates? Li Hong. So Li Hong, when you go into skillsfuture.sg, uh, the page, you look under e-services and you log in using your same pass, they would have your WSQ certificate records. But of course, the best is hopefully you have kept the hard copies. Uh, if you didn't keep the hard copies, try going in, logging in with your same pass, they would have back-end records of your certificates. So you can check up on that. Hobby or skill, you can use the skill future credit. So Wendy, it depends on what kind of hobbies you're looking for. So if your hobby is something which improves your skill sets, for example, photography, and you, as long as you can find that keyword inside the My Skills Future directory, you can use that credits to pay for it. Of course, if you're asking me to prioritize, whether do I take a hobby course or a skill course, it is really up to you. I, I cannot decide for you, but you will want to decide whether currently are you working? Are you looking for a job? If you are looking for a job or if you are working, does having a skill help you in your job versus going for a hobby course? Okay? So you weigh and balance between which one is more important for you at this moment. Okay? I hope this helps you. Okay, so Li Hong, most of the time, the training providers will be more than happy to help you with your course application. So you can just uh, approach them and say that, I'm not very sure how I can submit my claims. Can you help me? Most importantly is, of course, when they help you with your submission, make sure you log into your SIM pass yourself. Don't go and write it down for people. And after they have submitted the claim for you, make sure they log out of the system as well, just to pro protect your private information, okay, your SIM pass. For the cash award. So Sally, the, the certificate is listed, right? So it depends on what course you are taking. So for example, if I take a module in HR, example recruitment, but in order to get a certificate, I need to get two more modules for HR, maybe com and band and training. So yes, if in order to get that certificate, then you need to take all three courses but it depends on what kind of certificates you have or what kind of modules you have taken up. So going back again, it must be relevant to what you want to pick up. Don't just take the certificates for the sake of taking. Okay? Yeah, so for question 14, just now Sally was asking for the cash reward must attain all the certificates listed or not. So it really depends on what certificates you have taken and whether or not you want to take up more of the similar types of questions, uh, similar type of certificates. Okay, that's a question. Will the awards for attending WSQ courses be automatically added to your bank account or do we need to submit any form to qualify for the awards? So yes, the Skills Future Qualification Award needs to be on a submission basis. So WSQ courses, the diploma and the certificates, you will need to apply for the course under the e-services of skillsfuture.sg. So you need to go in and check whether any of the courses <coughs> that you attended qualify for this Skills Future Qualification Award. So once you have applied and submitted together with your bank information and you're eligible for it, then they will pay the amount to your bank account. Okay, are there any more questions? Feel free to ask more questions because through questions, then you will learn from each other or you may have thought about it, but 
you didn't ask and then you, you actually managed to find out from other people's questions. So I hope that I managed to answer all your questions. If I didn't manage to, you want to rephrase it too, feel free to rephrase it. Okay, another question we have. Many seniors like to sing and dance. Why cannot use FSC for many of these provided by the CCs can appeal? Yeah, so Li Hong, the, the purpose of Skills Future Credit is basically to upgrade our skills and knowledge in certain areas. So singing and dancing, unless you're talking about professional dancing or professional singing, these are usually not covered under Skills Future Credit because what we hope to do through Skills Future Credit is to upgrade people in the skills category. So why is it photography is inside? Because you can become a professional photographer and earn a living from this. But if you are thinking about singing and dancing, unless you take up professional courses in singing and dancing, you do not earn a living from it. It is more of a hobby type of course okay, or kind of a program. Hope this helps you understand a bit more. Hey, okay, so do I, are there any more questions that you would like to ask? Okay, there's a question. If we didn't know about these awards and only submit a form years later, will the awards expire by, by Yen Kim Tan? Okay. So at this moment, there is no expiry date for the awards or the submission. Okay, so just try to submit as much as possible. And that is why we have been going around sharing with people about this awards. And some of the training providers may also notify the trainees when they actually get a diploma or when they get a certificate, they will tell the trainee, please go and apply for this qualification award. So not only, we are not the only ones sharing this, the training provider partners are sharing this to their people as well, their trainees as well. Okay, if there are any more questions, feel free to ask. Okay, the question is just now, you mentioned cash award, will it take very long to get the payout by Victor? Okay, so usually once you submit and if all your documents are in place and all your details are in place, it usually will not take very long to get that payout. It should be about a few weeks to one month. Okay. Because now every, everything is automated, so it will be routed back end to the providers or to SSG very quickly. Just make sure you submit all the things that they mentioned that is required in the form. Oh, we answer your question, Victor. Hey, anyone has any other questions? So now the Skills Future portal, my Skills Future course directory, actually has more than sixteen thousand courses that you can look at. So if you look at it and then you just search for it using keywords, it, just now I was sharing right the Android phone thing. If it's more than one keyword, you can do an open and close inverted comma, and then it will restrict the search for you. Okay. So since there are no more questions. Let's proceed next. So before I end, 
I want to share this quote by Lao Zi with all of you. A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Sometimes it's always very difficult to make that first step. So, but once you start taking that first step, it is, becomes easier as well. So importantly, from what we discussed today, if you have something that you want to learn or you're interested in, remember to take action. So planning is one thing. Searching for courses is one thing. But do register with a training provider. Check out what are the different courses you can sign up for and take action towards your career of lifelong, towards your journey of lifelong learning. So with that, thank you very much, everyone, for attending this session with C3A. And thank you very much for C3A for inviting us here for the NSA eNugget series. So if you find our talk useful, do like and share the video with your friends and families to help them pick up useful tips. And if you have any more questions about SkillsFuture credit, you can ask me now or you can go to the FAQs under the SkillsFuture portal to find out more or call the hotline stated in the screen right now. Okay, with that, thank you very much, everyone. Let me check whether there's any more questions. Okay, so there are no more questions. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending this session. I hope you found it useful. And of course, wishing everyone a very healthy uh, and safe journey and lifelong learning in whatever you do. Great lifelong learning journey in whatever you do. Okay, thank you very much.